Hello YouTube! I'm back once again to calculate another kind of Earth's curvature um, and th that is the drop height. So the drop height is if I could extend, if I could take a board that didn't bend under its own weight and break if you tried to move it out longer, um, nothing exists that would be able to go out straight enough for us to see a difference here. Um, but if I could take a perfectly straight board that was I don't know, miles and miles long, could I see how far it was above the surface of the Earth because the gradual curve of the Earth would go below it. Okay. Uh, and this is how we would calculate that drop height. Um, the easiest thing to do if you wanted a perfectly straight, straight line is if you had a nice powerful laser that you could put out as a straight line. And it would travel in the straight line and you could see how far above the surface of the Earth it actually was. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this around because I don't like the way this is as far as calculating stuff. It would be easier to sort of move it over to the other side of its little rectangle there. So it'll be the same over there and down here. So now I have some triangles in there so then it's going to be a little bit easier to see what I'm calculating. I'm going to cal calculate this. This is still our drop height. Just because I moved it from over here to here doesn't change that fact. So I'm going to call it D for drop height and I'm going to call this A simply because it's the first thing I'm calculating. And again we need to know what this theta is. Now if we let this um, distance along the Earth's surface be one mile, obviously this picture is much bigger than a mile. It's, uh, it's about an eighth of the Earth in this picture but we're going to let it be one mile. I'm going to calculate what the angle down here is going to be. Now once again if I take um, this angle and compare it to the number of degrees in the whole Earth, which is 360, it will be the same as if I take the length of this arc, which is one mile, and compare it to the length of the arc that goes around the entire circle, which is the circumference, which is 2 times pi times 3959, which is the radius, 2 pi r, which is the radius of the Earth in miles. Now to calculate theta, I'm going to multiply both sides by 360. So I do the 1 times 360, and then we're going to divide by the 2 pi times 3959. Now, you'll notice that that's actually exactly this, the same calculation that we did over here. So I'm just going to um, do a copy and a paste so that I don't have to write all of those numbers down again. And there's my lovely number. Now this time we're using that whole thing. I don't have to split it in two like I did when I was calculating bulge height. Um, but we're going to use some trigonometry again. This side length here that we're trying to calculate because D and A together are going to make up a whole radius of the circle. So if I can calculate what A is, then I can just take the radius and subtract it off to get the leftover bit, which is D. Well, that A is the adjacent side, and this is the hypotenuse, um, which is, of course, also a radius of the circle, so we've got 3959 9 there. So I'm going to calculate A by using adjacent and hypotenuse, which is cosine. So we need the cos of that angle theta, remember theta is measured in degrees, um, cos of, I'm going to round it to 0 0.01447. That is going to equal the adjacent side, our A that we're trying to find, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 3959 in miles. And to get A by itself, I'm going to multiply both sides by the 3959. So we do 3959 times the cos of 0 0.01447, and that's going to give me what A is. Now, so we'll go over here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this whole number on my calculator again. So I'd have to do 360 divided by 2, divided by pi, divided by 3959. And I get that preposterously long decimal number. And I have to take the cosine of it and then multiply by 3959. So we're going to hit the cos button and then times it by 3959. And what I get is pretty darn close to the radius, 
but not quite, 3958.9998. So A equals 3958.9998. Now, of course, I'm going to use all of the digits on the calculator. I'm not going to write them all down because that's um, kind of an issue. But to find the drop height, I have to do the radius, 3959. Subtract this number, 3958.9998, which is going to be pretty darn close to the radius. Now, I'm going to do this backwards because this calculator works better that way, so I'm just going to go minus 3959. It's going to give me a negative answer, but that's just because I subtracted the bigger number from the small number. I can just ignore the negative sign. So 0 0.00013. 0 0.00013. Now, of course, that's in miles. If I want to change it to inches, I have to times it by uh, 63360, which is the number of inches in a mile. And that is going to give me times 63360. 63360. That's going to give me, well, 8. 8.002. Which matches the 8 inches per mile squared. Okay. Now we're going to see how well it matches the 8 inches per mile squared for, for things that are bigger than a mile. Um, I've plugged these formulas into my spreadsheet again, so I'm going to pull up my spreadsheet. And you can see I've got the viewing distance of one mile and the radius of the Earth here. The theta, you can't really compare the theta because the spreadsheet works in radians, not degrees. And when I did it, um, I worked in, when I did it over here, I worked in degrees. So that theta won't match, but the rest of the stuff will. If you take a look at A, 3958.99987, that's exactly what uh, we got over here, although I didn't put the 7 on the end. Okay. And, whoop, wrong one, spreadsheet, okay. And we got the 8.00202 that we got before. Now, I want to compare this to the 8 inches per mile squared. So over here, this is actually, if you look at here, this is the 8 inches times miles times miles um, that we have up here. B2 is what we have in the miles. B2 is miles. So that's 8 times 1 times 1, which, of course, gives us 8. So we, what we want to do is compare this, um, let's see if I can highlight that. Let's just put a border around it. We're going to compare that, that's in inches, to this, which is also in inches, as I change what the viewing distance is. So those two boxes, we're going to compare them and see how close, and we might even change, um, compare the feet if the numbers start getting too big. But let's go to 2. Is it close? Yep, this says exactly 32. This is 32.08. Let's go to 20 now. 3200.8, 3200. That's getting a little bit farther away. Let's go to 100. Now this is 80,000, and this says 80,015. So you can see that they're starting to get, the, the further away I get, the worse this approximation is doing when compared to the more accurate trigonometry. Uh, if we go, let's say we go 300 miles away, this says 720,000. This is not 720,000, this is 719,837, which is a little bit further off. And we'll do one more, we'll go to 600, where you can see this says 2, um, that's 2,880,000, and this is 2,875,000, basically. So you can see that the farther this gets away, the more these two numbers aren't matching up. Now, this is more accurate as far as a circle is concerned, but since the Earth is not a complete, like it's not a perfect sphere in the first place, we can't be that accurate to begin with. So we're just using approximations anyway. And of course, we can't see 600 miles to, to see anything along the surface of the Earth anyway. Everything would get um, too small and definitely too far below uh, our line of sight. 
So that is drop height, um, which is what most people calculate, the 8 inches per mile squared, which really has only a small little bit to do with what we see hidden over the curvature of the Earth, um, which is what people, the flat earthers, really like to apply that formula to. Um, so I'm just going to leave that one there.